Hello there friends and welcome, for today's Pathfinder video we have an updated Raju build. Raju is probably a fan favorite, certainly one of the most well liked characters in the game, including for myself. This time I wanted to go with something that would improve Raju even further, so I decided to turn him into a mounted Dark Knight of sorts, which I think fits him both gameplay wise and character wise too. This way you still have all of his very powerful dual wielded attacks at around 8 per round, not counting attacks of opportunity and so on, while also giving him all sorts of great boosts from the Cavalier class, and of course, a close to full level horse companion to also provide him with the ultimate armor class, as when it comes to mounted combat, it's the horse's AC that counts, both for ranged and melee attacks. In combat, this is actually way higher than on the sheet here, you can definitely get higher than 80 AC with your horse. So without further ado, let us get into our mounted Dark Knight Regio build. Raju comes at level 6, which means you only get from level 7 upwards to customize him. Fighter is a pretty solid class as usual. Hell Knight on the other hand, I'm afraid it's a very, very underwhelming prestige class. My first build for Raju was mostly as a fighter. For these updated companion guides, however, I want to try something different. And ever since I've heard how powerful a mounted Raju could be, I wanted to try my hand at my own, so... I'll be going with Cavalier and Gendarme. Gendarmes have amazing bonus feats that you can pick as almost anything, just like a fighter. They still get a powerful Cavalier ability such as Cavalier's Charge and Mighty Charge. And of course they have full scaling pet progression as early as level 1, which for Reg matters because <laughs> he already comes at level 6. If you went with a class like, for example, Ranger and Demon Slayer, which is super powerful as well, he would only get a pet at Ranger level 4. With Gendarme and the Bull Companion feat, our pet will end up at level 19, which is kinda good, considering it's just one level below the max. Now, it is true that Gendarmes are basically stuck with the horse. Honestly, the horse is just fine. I have used Scylla as a full paladin for basically all of my runs, including runs on Unfair, and the horse can easily carry its own weight. While you could go with Beast Rider to select any pet of choice, you don't get as many feats as Gendarme, and since Reg requires all of the dual wielding feats, some teamwork feats, and some other generic feats, I'd much rather go with Gendarme. As far as Reg's skill points, we are getting some mounted combat feats, so I would go with mobility first, Besides, he does have high dexterity. His actual starting skills are somewhat disappointing. The knowledge and the lore skills are much better left for other characters. And as far as persuasion, the same really. Someone like Darren or Amber is way better at this than him. What you can do is go for two in mobility here and get one point in use magic device. There's plenty of great scrolls you can use to self buff, especially now with the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles, because you can get even the best scrolls in the game as early as chapter three. For his first feat at level seven, Boom Companion is a must, since he does have 6 levels in a non pet giving class. For your Cavalier Order, the problem with Cockatrice is that as far as I've tested, the very good Steel Glory ability will not stack with Outflank, so it's kind of a bummer. I'd rather go with Order of the Sword. The By My Honor ability is kinda useless, but Mounted Mastery though is very powerful. Whenever you make a charge attack while mounted, your horse's strength modifier will be added to your damage rolls. Horses like Pass can achieve super high strength, definitely close to 50 at the end game, which means something like plus 20 extra damage whenever you charge. Plus you also get a mounted combat feat for free. If you're wondering about the Black Horse, which is the one I prefer for Reju, for style, as he's more of a Dark Knight kind of character, Black Horse is just a pellet swap and if you don't have it, it's because it's a reward for pre-ordering, I think, and also for the mythic edition of the game. But it doesn't matter, you can go with the normal horse just fine. For our second feat, we don't really have space for improved which weapon fighting, we'll delay it for a little bit later. What you want now is outflank, this is always a must-have for any character, and by level 7, almost your whole party should already have access to it, including your very own horse and all of your other pets. Even better for Reggio, because he is a dual-wielding character. From level 8 onwards, I would keep progression into Gendarme. At level 8, as strange as this might sound, I would actually go for strength. That's right, the reality is it is way easier to increase strength instead of dexterity in Pathfinder. The main reason is size increasing spells. And since Raju starts at small size by virtue of being a gnome, you can actually cast legendary proportions on him for a plus 6 strength and still ride his horse just fine. This also frees us from having to get Mythic Weapon Finesse, which is boring because it's basically a wasted Mythic feat. Your Buy My Honor ability doesn't really matter because it's just a morale bonus and at this point you can already cast Heroism, Good Hope or Greater Heroism for way better effects, but you might as well pick Lawful and Will. For level 9, first improve at weapon fighting to increase our offhand attacks and then improve at critical 
Gnome Hooked Hammer, which is Raju's special weapon. It doesn't have that high of a critical range, it caps out at 19 to 20, which isn't really good. But he does have a lot of attacks per round to compensate. By level 10, you'll already max out your mobility ranks per level, so resume increasing use magic device. For level 11, great touch weapon fighting, so now we have capped out our offhand attacks. For your level 12 feat, Combat Reflexes, we get this somewhat late, but Raju will also gain the Ever Ready Mythic ability earlier to compensate, and that already grants you more attacks of opportunity. For level 13, Mounted Combat, the main reason is to qualify for Spirited Charge, which we'll get for free at the next level, thanks to our Mounted Mastery, Gendarme, Order of the Sword ability. So at level 14, Spirited Charge, this can highly increase your Regis damage whenever charging. Even if you don't have a Scald 4 pounds, it's still a pretty big amount just for the first attack. For level 15, 2 bonus feats. And just in time, because what we want is Death in Display, and then Shatter Defenses, all at the same level. Perfect, as this is when your casters have access to the Frightful Aspect spell to automatically proc Shatter Defenses. Now, from level 16 onwards, you could theoretically multiclass Regio. Great picks are of course Ranger, and Demon Slayer for a plus 2 to attack and damage against all demons. There is always Slayer for study target and even sneak attacks and bonus talents too. You can also get another leveling fighter because this qualifies you for greater weapon focus into gnome hooked hammers. The problem is, because you already went with Gandarme, all of the other high base attack bonus classes will not increase your pet's progression, which is kind of a bummer. I'd much rather keep Reg as a Gendarme, so that his horse can achieve its ultimate potential. Because the reality is at this point, we pretty much already have the best feats overall. Maxed out dual wielding attacks, improved critical outflank combat reflexes, even shatter defenses. So all Reg is going to be powerful regardless. Might as well continue to make our horse good too. For level 17, power attack. I know it's kinda late, it's just that as a dual wielding character, we don't have that many feats to spare with Regio. And Power Attack has lower damage bonuses when dual wielding, so it's not as needed when compared to two-handed characters. At the very least, at this point in the game, you'll already get quite a nice boost from Power Attack damage, and you have enough buffs to attack rolls to compensate the penalty. For level 18, Improved Initiative. We are pretty much at chapter 5 at this point, so just in time for the toughest Demon Lord battles and some other high stat enemies too. The sooner we can act, the better. Especially since Regio, well, he already has high dexterity, so I don't think improved initiative is needed as early with him. For your level 19 feat, you might as well pick Double Slice here to increase his offhand damage. Now, I suppose for the last level at 20, I mean, your horse would end up at level 18, which is not that bad, instead of 19 if you don't keep Gandharme, since you don't get an extra feat from it. You can, of course, go with Alchemist and Vivisectionist for the classic, plus 4 to Strength Mutagen and Sneak Attack. And there's always Ranger and Demon Slayer, especially since the favorite enemy bonus will also apply to your horse's attacks, kind of to compensate it's not getting an extra level. I'll just skip to Gendarme for simplicity. And remember, for your last ability point, increase Wisdom instead to leave it at an even score. Although if your Regio is part of a Trickster party, you might as well leave Strength at 17, because Tricksters can increase the enhancement bonus of belts and other stat boosting gear you find, so it will become even at the end. Alright, now let's talk Mythic progression for our Cavalier Regio. For your first Mythic feat, as usual, if you are on Unfair, then last stand. Otherwise, you can delay it. Since Regio is a mounted character, Leading Strike is always a nice a pick here, because of the way you alternate attacks with your mount. So, you mark the enemy with the Strike ability, your pet attacks and procs it, and so on. If you already have another character though, like Scylla, that has leading strike, I'd skip it. Unrelenting Assault can also work for an early pick, especially for dual wielding characters. Since Red, you can get outflank pretty early, I'd rather just get Ever Ready here, especially since he only gets combat reflexes later on, and this will already grant him an extra 2 attacks of opportunity per round. For Mythic 2, thankfully we don't need to pick Mythic Weapon Finesse because of our highest strength, so go with Mythic 2 Weapon Fighting instead, which will increase Regio's attack bonus when dual wielding by a plus 2 for all of his attacks. Quite efficient. For Mythic Rank 3, I'd go for Unrelenting Assault. The earlier you can get this, the better. You might even switch it with Ever Ready if you prefer. For Mythic Rank 4, Mythic Critical and Hooked Hammer. As I said before, it doesn't have the highest critical range, but the critical damage can be pretty good. And since you have so many attacks anyways, you'll be getting criticals every now and then. For Mythic Rank 5, Mythic Charge if you have a Scald to provide pounds for your party. Otherwise, Mythical Beast to increase the power of your horse. Since I do 
use cults, I'll go with Mythic Charge. After all, Cavaliers are all about charging. As for Mythic Rank 6, Mythic Weapon Specialization and Gnome Hooked Hammer. For Mythic Level 7, Mythical Beast, if you didn't pick it before, instead of Mythic Charge. At this point, it's quite a hefty boost to our horse's physical scores. For Mythic Rank 8, Mythic Power Attack at last. Then for Mythic 9, you might as well pick Last Stand, just in case for the end game and the inevitable excess DLC where enemies are super stacked. Assuming you didn't pick it before, of course. As for Mythic Rank 10, you have two choices. Mythic Improved Initiative, or you can also pick Destiny Beyond Birth to remove Radius' racial penalty to his strength. So it's basically an effective plus two strength to him. Is it needed? Not that much, but it helps. I'd rather go with Mythic Initiative though, because it's such a high boost. Alright, now let's get into gear for our Regio. For the amulet slot, I prefer amulets that increase initiative. Amulets of natural armor don't matter because you can just cast the bark skin spell instead. For armor, since Regio is going to rely on his horses, armor class instead. As usual for mounted characters, go with ones that have nice passives. The chain mail of camaraderie, as always, is amazing for dual wielding characters because of the very high plus 4 boost to damage. The royal messenger's chain shirt can add a lot of extra reflex, but most importantly, a huge combatant's bonus to Regius' mobility checks, which helps because mobility enhances mounted combat. Otherwise, you can just go with Mithril full plates if you want higher AC, as Regio does have pretty high dexterity. For the clothing slot, just go with the heavy fortification ones. I don't think there's anything quite as good for Regio. As far as belts, at the start, belts that increase strength, and later, belts of both strength and constitution. For the glove slots, as usual for any dual building character, Francis' gift is by far the best. But in the case of Regio, it is even better. For most characters, it is just an increase to your offhand damage. For a fighter with weapon training, which Regio does have, even with just 5 fighter levels, this means an extra plus 2 to your weapon training ability. So an extra plus 2 to both the attack and damage rolls of your hook at hammers. If you have other dual wielding characters, I would still recommend you give this glove to Regio. Boots kinda don't matter much for him, I just have Elvenkind here for the bonus to mobility checks. But as usual we can go with the boots of free reign for freedom of movement or just cast a spell. And if you went with athletics, also the boots of stampede, although I'd rather focus on mobility for this Regio. For the helmet slot, earlier helms that increase initiative like Windmaster, but ultimately the Shy Lily helmet for the huge plus 4 profane bonus to strength. And if you're wondering about why not leave this to the main character instead? Well, if you had a main character focused on strength, they can easily get a much higher profane bonus by accepting Nocticulous Gift instead, something that is achieved pretty much at the same time as you can make the Shy Lily Helmet. For Googles, Googles of Piercing Gaze are usually the best. Thanks to the stacking plus one inside bonus to attack and damage against demons, and all outsiders even. Great for the first DLC 2 where you fight non-demonic outsiders. For cloaks, as usual, the ones with the highest resistance modifier possible. As far as rings, the Ring of Evasion can help. Raju has high enough dexterity to get good reflex saving throws when buffed. And the other ring slot is really up to you. Sadly, the Ring of Imminent Demise won't help because when you use your hooked hammer for dual wielding, it is not treated as a two-handed weapon. You can give him the Ring of Summoning or also the Clemency of Shadows too, if you don't want them on other characters, as these rings have auras, so they hit your whole party no matter which character they are equipped on. As far as bracers, heavy hand are the best for any dual wielding character, but if you want them on someone else, there's also the bracers of breaching, although they aren't as useful. Now let's cover weapons and quick slots for Regio. So, because I got a lot of questions related to this in, in my previous Regio build video, Regio's main weapons are gnome hooked hammers. They are special in that, like some other dual weapons, like the double bladed sword, they are just one weapon, but they count as if you were dual wielding. For example, if I were to remove Honorable Judgment, I just have to equip it once on Regio, and there we go, we get all of our dual wielding attacks. Kinda neat. The best one overall to me is still Honorable Judgment, despite it being the first of the unique hooked hammers you find. You get it pretty early, just at chapter 2. It has axiomatic, so deals bonus damage against chaotic enemies, including demons. And the first hit Regio deals during a round on a chaotic creature will also do an additional 1d6 holy damage. It is just plus 2 by default, but remember you can easily increase it to plus 5 by just casting the greater magic weapon buff. The other unique hooked hammers are Wrecking Devil, which already is plus 5 and axiomatic, but its unique property of reducing spell resistance I think is kinda useless overall, because by the point you get it, your party members, well, they have so many ways of easily bypassing spell resistance. This is late game only at like chapter 5, 
As far as the critical hit effect, well, gnome hook hammers don't have high critical range, and even then this has a DC of 31, which is not really high for the end game. Plus, by the time Regil gets a critical hit, because of the outflank feat, you will just destroy the enemy, so the penalty to armor class kinda doesn't matter, especially since hooked hammers do have super high critical damage. The second head of the weapon actually can get up to times 6, even higher depending on your mythic path and so on. Lastly, we have Crushing Burden, which is a vicious weapon, and I do hate them. I'm sorry, but vicious weapon damage your own character whenever you're attacking, considering how many attacks Regil has. Well, you'll take a lot of damage. I only find them very useful in the hands of, let's say, a Lich, who does have ways of getting hit points back on every hit you deal. So to me, honorable judgment is the way to go. As far as quick slots, not that much. There aren't really that many useful items for Regil since he isn't a caster. The Dragon Familiar Jarsigax can always help, increase your damage, just remember to combine it with the Bane of Spirit Ring to turn all of your damage, including elemental damage, into irresistible force damage. And the Lucky Dice can provide some neat bonuses too, as they last for the entire rest. Well alright friends, so this was it for my updated Regio Guide. If you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member to access some exclusive content and even request your own videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time!